solution consider a titration of potassium dichromate solution with acidified more salt solution using diphenylamine as indicator the number of moles of more salt required per mole of dichromate is so this is a redox titration between more salt nothing but fas ferrous ammonium sulfate solution plus potassium dichromate solution in presence of indicator called diphenyl amine as indicator and you are titrating potassium dichromate versus more salt solution then what is happening here k2 cr2 o7 in acidic medium h2so4 give rise to k2so4 plus cr2so4 thrice plus h2o plus 3 nascent oxygen so this is 4 h2so4 this is 4 h2o now this nascent oxygen is used for oxidation of ferrous sulfate of more salt feso4 in acidic medium get oxidized to ferric sulfate fe2so4 thrice plus h2o ille more nascent oxygen produce aagta ide so this equation to be multiplied by 3 So let us cancel this three nascent oxygen, three this nascent oxygen, and equation to be balanced here: two FeSO4 because there are two iron here, and this is almost balanced. Three sulfate. This is three sulfate. Now, summing up this equation: K2Cr2O7 plus two threes are six. FeSO4 plus 4 plus 3 7H2SO4 give rise to K2SO4 plus Cr2SO4 thrice plus 3 moles of Fe2SO4 thrice plus 4 plus 3 7H2O. so forget about all this by products and other reactant we need to be concentrating on this part so every mole of potassium dichromate needs 6 moles of ferrous sulfate for complete reaction this is one way of determining the other way is during this conversion chromium changing from plus 6 oxidation to plus 3 oxidation so this is from plus 3 plus 6 to Plus three oxidation, plus six to plus three oxidation. So two moles of chromium, six electrons involved. So there are six iron required from con converting from plus two to plus three. So this is from plus six to plus three into two. This is into three. This is into two. So this is other way of determining it. this is the usual way of determining it so you need 6 moles of feso4 for complete oxidation of 1 mole of potassium dichromate so answer is option d The next question is the correct order of decreasing second ionization enthalpy of titanium vanadium chromium manganese is first option chromium greater than manganese vanadium greater than titanium vanadium greater than manganese greater than chromium greater than titanium the third option that is option c manganese greater than chromium greater than titanium greater than vanadium option d titanium greater than vanadium greater than chromium greater than manganese
Now titanium, if I talk, it is 3D2, 4S2. Vanadium, it is 3D3, 4S2. Chromium, it is 3D5, 4S1. Manganese, it is 3D5, 4S2. Now this is exceptional. I'm you know, writing with a star. This is exceptional. As you move from titanium towards manganese along the 3D series towards this side, since the effective nuclear charge increases from titanium towards manganese, obviously the first ionization enthalpy will be always in this order. Manganese greater than chromium greater than vanadium greater than titanium. But for the removal of second electron that is second high E, after removing one electron from chromium, from chromium, after this electron is been removed, the chromium acquires completely half filled D subshell. That is, this is half filled D orbital is more stable. So, removal of electron from this D5 is very difficult. Therefore, the harder is going to be chromium, otherwise, remaining all remains the same. Chromium will have exceptionally high I second ionization enthalpy compared to manganese, compared to vanadium, vanadium, compared to titanium. So, this is the harder. So, second ionization energy is highest for chromium, that is exceptional because after removing first electron, the chromium acquires stable half field configuration in the D subshell. Therefore, the order is going to be option A is correct one. Chromium having second IE greater than manganese, greater than vanadium, greater than titanium. So, option A is correct one. The next question, the color of light absorbed by an aqueous solution of copper sulphate is? You all know that D block element compounds which possess partially filled D orbital containing unpaired electrons, one or more, will exhibit color. The color shown by a solution of D block element compound will be complementary to the color absorbed. During DD transition from T2G to EG orbital, so whatever the color absorbed by the solution from a visible white light, the complementary of that color will be shown by a compound. So, copper sulphate solution looks blue green in color because it absorbs orange red. So, orange red is complementary to blue green. So, copper sulphate solution looks blue in blue green color that is because it has absorbed orange red which is a complementary to blue green. Always compound exhibit the complementary of the, comp the color of the light which has been transmitted. Right. I have told you only those compounds which possess unpaired electrons in the D subshell can exhibit or can form colored compounds. But there is a caution point here, reminder, keep this in mind. In case of Cr2 or K2Cr2O7, the anion Cr2O7 2 minus. Here chromium is in plus 6 oxidation state which has lost all the D electron which is having no D electron unpaired, but still it is colored. Even chromate 
CrO4 2 minus chromate anion. Here also there are no d orbital electron unpaired, but still it is showing color. Another incident MnO4 minus in case of potassium permanganate. MnO4, KmnO4 that is MnO4 minus, here manganese is in plus 7 oxidation state. What is the electronic configuration of manganese? It is 25 D5 4S2. So, when it is in plus 7 oxidation state, it means that it has lost all these electrons. So, it has Configuration D0, S0, yes, that is 3D0, 4S0, but still it exhibits a pink color, that is deep pink color. How it is possible? These are the exceptions. So, not just because of presence of unpaired electron, the D block element compounds are colored, there are some exceptions here. Even though they have a D0 configuration, they are colored. This is not because of DD transition. The color of copper sulphate, the color of this copper sulphate solution is because of DD transition. DD transition, a electron promoting from T2G orbital to EG orbital. But in case of these ions, the transition metal having D0 configuration, but still it is giving color or showing color. That is because of charge transfer charge transfer, charge transfer. So, in this case from oxygen to chromium there is a transfer of charge, chromium changing from plus 6 to plus 5. In this case again there is a charge transfer from oxygen to manganese, where manganese changing from plus 7 to manganese plus 6. So, because of this charge transfer, these compounds are colored, not because of having unpaired electrons in D subshell. So, dear students, this is a caution point. Remember, all D block element compound which possess unpaired electrons exhibit color. The color of D block elements is because of DD transition generally, but exceptions are here. Compounds like this, even though they do not have unpaired electrons in their D subshell, they exhibit color that is because of charge transfer. So, during tr charge transfer, they acquire color. The aqueous solution of copper sulphate looks bluish green, therefore, it should have absorbed its complementary color that is orange red. So, therefore, option D is correct one.